Maldivians live on about 200 inhabited islands in the country. This is the Maldives you don't usually see. Women unwinding at the end of the day by playing the traditional Maldivian sport, bashi. Men spending their evenings playing football after trawling the seas for fish. If you look at the map, you might mistake this for the size of the islands. It's not. This is. There are over 1,000 islands in the Maldives. They are dotted around like strings of pearls. One string is called an atoll. Over 80% of the land in the Maldives is below one meter above sea level. The islanders, whose overall contribution to global carbon emissions is negligible, are now on the front line of the impact of climate change. Naima Abdullah is from the Maldives. The 48-year-old school teacher became emotional when the local council members came to visit her family. Her house is here, only half a meter from the sea, and Naima is worried about its safety. She's hopeful that the ongoing UNDP support in her community will help to protect her house. Increased storm activity caused by climate change means increased pounding wave action along the coast. This increases the rate of beach erosion. Sometimes during the uh, weather is bad, three, four meter waves are coming here. And people are really worried about living in this area. So I think we get, uh, when the project is done, people are happy for that. Here, in Tinadu, construction has started using geotextile sandbags to prevent beach erosion. The bags will reinforce the existing shoreline and protect the beach from eroding further. Existing ridge is further rehabilitated and strengthened with local vegetation. It is a natural barrier to protect against the high tides. Detailed guidelines for coastal protection are now available and some of the measures are being tested. On the island of Huarafushi in the north of the Maldives, people are facing a different challenge. Ms. Amunat Maurufa lives here. In November 2014, relentless heavy rain flooded her home. The water almost rose to one meter. Her mattress, drawers, fridge, and other electronic equipment were damaged beyond use. Since the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, the Maldives has achieved much in disaster risk reduction. The local government has realized the increasing risks of more frequent floods after establishing a local disaster risk management plan. council midani mihar UNDP Water pump stations are built so that when the flood hits, water can be immediately drained into the sea. On Kaludafushi Island, the government is constructing a drainage system. It will help to drain excess stormwater and feeds the underground water reserve. Plastic bottles, bags, food cans, batteries. Here, and on most other islands, Waste is dumped onto the island foreshore and burned in open ground. Plumes of smoke rising from smouldering mounds of rubbish, this method of waste disposal is threatening the coastal reef ecosystem and poses a serious health hazard for the islanders. While the Global Environment Facility, or GEF, 
funded the island to build a proper waste disposal station to prevent pollution and environmental degradation. The local government is also trying to educate its population on recycling and reuse. Sixty-year-old Ibrahim Bashir is an entrepreneur. He builds houses, tailors clothes and owns a restaurant while caring and providing for a family of eight. There's one thing that makes him helpless. Water shortage. Now, Ihavandu, Mahobadu and Gadu have their own water production plants. Seawater is piped for desalinization, rainwater is collected and disinfected. Both sources are blended and piped to households. This water is much cheaper and more affordable than desalinization alone. Fresh water is now running from the tap. Maldivians rarely get to see this. Pristine luxury resort islands. They do, however, rely on them. Tourism is the largest economic industry in the Maldives and plays an important role in earning foreign exchange revenues and generating employment. With support from the Least Developed Countries Fund, UNDP is also helping the government to increase climate change resilience through adaptation in the tourism sector. Communities and resorts are brought together to jointly come up with adaptation solutions that benefit all, including local habitat. During the project implementation, at least 10 new public-private investment partnerships between the government and tourism resorts are established. In Park Hyatt, marine biologist Chiara explains what they do here. The bird platform will basically act as an artificial sandbank in the water for the seabirds to come and nest on. It's going to be offered to the school so the school children can actually come and monitor what birds, if any, are coming to nest on the island. Through these partnerships, local communities will work with tourism operators, cooperate in joint initiatives to adapt to climate change, and reduce common vulnerabilities. In Bar Atoll, an atoll ecosystem conservation project was initiated to try to conserve the environment. It has become the first biosphere reserve of the Maldives, and the atoll's exceptional marine and coastal biodiversity is well protected. The Maldives is facing waves of climate change reality. Adapting to this change is crucial for the survival of the country. With multiple risks, such as rising sea levels, water stress and frequent floods, the adaptation effort has to be well planned and coordinated at different levels. With the help from agencies like UNDP and JEF, the government of the Maldives is addressing climate change challenges with localized solutions. We are learning from experience and planning adaptation at the national level. With more allies, a better informed public and innovative solutions, people living only one meter above sea level will have a chance to win their battle against climate change.